I haven't opened it up since. It's a very bold statement, I must say. Interesting. Wow, these are really philosophical things. Okay, let's go on. It makes sense that I was referencing a book. See what I'm saying here, but it's all very fluffy. It's all very abstract. That's true, yeah, I remember that. Hello, folks. This is me. Okay, so I'm screen, re screen recording at the same time that I'm doing this. Let's hope it works. I'm gonna put a timer on my phone. Okay, so for the, today's video, I thought it would be cool, maybe, to look over the personal statement that got me into the University of St. Andrews. Amore? Is my voice gonna annoy you? No. Okay. So when I applied for the University of St. Andrews, it was through UCAS, and I also applied to, I think, four other universities. And this personal statement was directed to all of them at once. And they were all different degrees, different um, subjects. I believe I one of the degrees I, I applied to was liberal arts and another was English. Probably a couple other liberal arts. University of St. Andrews was the only one that was so specific for art history and international relations. I had a huge task of trying to make sure that my statement was relevant to all those degrees. I haven't opened it up since. We'll see how good it is, how I feel about it. If there's anything I think is still good and worth your while, we'll point it out. And hopefully this will be useful and helpful for you. And if not, it was just fun. Okay, personal statement draft two, um, but I don't think I submitted it as draft two. I, this is just the most recent version I have on my doc on my um, computer. Let's start with the first sentence, probably the most important sentence. What knowledge we make of humankind from our words, our stories, and our remnants is merely conjectural. Okay, wow. These are big words I used. I would disagree with myself. I'm saying that, that nothing is true. Nothing that we deduce today is true. Wow, these are really philosophical things. Okay, let's go on. It's a very bold statement, I must say. Yet, they are, oh, you look at this. They are the deduced truths of our universe that bind us together morally, socially, culture, culturally. I forgot and there. Check your grammar. Okay. In the courses I'm applying to, I seek to learn the origins of our moral, social, and cultural identities. Oh, look at that. I'm already seeing issues here. I, I repeated moral, social, cultural, and those are just redundant, you know? People just use them as fluff, as, um, as sort of filler terms, so I'm not already happy with that. But let's see, it got me so far. <laughs> In the courses I'm up, oh, here you go. And to consequently answer the pressing questions of human life. Wow. At heart, I am a messenger. I believe my studies at university level will allow me to further explore the art of communication and the language of our past and present, which will, as a result, bring to light the issues of modern life and the demands of today's political, economic, and social situations. Okay, I would actually say that last part from the four years of studies that I did, it's kind of true. I mean, it's general enough to be true, I think, to any subject, which is why it worked so well, because I had all these different degrees but, that I was applying to. But it seems to me that I'm saying, I'm really saying a profound statement here, that we need to learn about our history to fix our present. Okay. Kurt Vonnegut was an author who expressed his critical message through Slaughterhouse-Five, a novel about a soldier who survived the bombing of Dresden. I read this book in high school and we had to study it, so I think I'm using it here as a case study to show how intelligent I am. But really, we were all forced to learn it, but I must have taken some sort of note that you should refer to someone, a quote, or some sort of story, um, and, and take from that to help color your own message, your own statement. The protagonist, Billy Pilgrim, returned, returned to his life Traumatized and deeply affected by the war. That's true, yeah, I remember that. Vonnegut told the story through the manner in which he told the story, defying chronological sequence to reflect man's stream of consciousness and making Billy Pilgrim an optometrist to enlighten the reader on the role of perspective in life. I aspire to pass along knowledge and spark discussion not solely through content but also through effect and impression, akin to Vonnegut, and I believe my courses will support me in this. So I get what I'm trying to say here. 
I'm trying to say that it's how I how I engage with people around me and engage with ideas rather than who it is I'm engaging with, what it is I'm engaging with, which is so important. And you know, people say that with university, especially in this very specialized topic, you tend to forget lots of the actual dates, you know, and the theories, and you more f remember the strategies you picked up on the way. So see what I'm saying here, but it's all very fluffy all very abstract. Growing up in an international community with one family branch stretching to Denmark and the other to Malaysia, I have found that my dual identity has permitted me to better see into the lives of others around me. Perspective is key to fighting prejudice. Hmm. After all, ignorance does not a global citizen make. I think I just learned that little wordplay. Hence, it is only a matter of logic to choose to study in the UK. Hmm the global hub of activity, okay? Studying there allows a student to reach out to any corner of the world to grab at the opportunity of international work. Okay, yeah, I get what I was saying there. I was saying, why do I want to go to the UK? I'm this person who studied in Malaysia, um, and so I'm, I guess I'm making my case, which is that the UK is at the epicenter of Europe. I don't know, is that the right way to say it? And that you can go to other places in Europe? Let's see. Studying there, blah blah blah, um, speaking English as my mother tongue is also a privilege that will be of tremendous support in my studies. Well, yes. Ever since I could recognize the powers of English, I'm so dramatic, I've been re reaping it of all its benefits. <laughs> okay, Socrates' pronouncement that an unexamined life is not worth living. This quote I remember was in my blog when I was 16. That's why I think I used it, because it was very special to me. Um, this quote has remained the maxim of my daily blog post since 2012, see? I would say that English as well as Danish, French, and Malay are languages which have lent me my voice and have led me to facing the complexities of universal understanding. Hmm. I know why I'm saying this. It's because I applied to study English as well. That's why it makes sense of talking about language and English. Actually, I did a really good job considering that I was applying to all these degrees because for English, it makes sense that I was referencing a book, um, Kurt Vonnegut, and that I'm talking about English, but at the same time, for art history and international relations, understanding histories of a country, histories of communities, and how they relate to one another in terms of communication and, and I don't know, language. It is due to my experience in theater making, being vice president of the student council, and a member of the NHS that I have found leadership in the humanities subjects. That's true. I've always sort of been taken leadership there, I would say. Taken interest. Spearheading an entire student body in dealing with administrative policies in a micro-government nudged my interest into liberal education. You know, when I applied to liberal arts, I don't think I even understood what it meant. I just saw arts and I thought, I like arts, and I thought liberal, and I thought, that means they probably aren't like strict on like fine arts and painting. They're liberal or free. <laughs> so that's what got me into that. Undertaking the duties of an NHS member allowed me to see the, the rewards of academic feat and urged me to continue challenging myself in studies. Mm. Okay. Furthermore, I researched and devised two theatrical performances one of which was nominated for Best Original Script at the Malaysian Arts Awards, that's true. These taught me the potential for art to be politically driven and pivotal for societal change. Ooh, that's good. That's good for art history, because that's so true. That's everything that we've been studying, it's the politics, really, behind all the, all the art that, we're, um, that we had. The theater book award I received at the end of my senior year. Oh, I forgot about this. As testimony to my keen interest in the work and since graduation, I've been working under an internship with the school theater, helping with the musical and the theater for advertisement, presentation, and student involvement. Through all these achievements, my passion for creative work has solidified. That's true. And even still, not much has changed. I still love doing creative stuff. And then my final, very, very final sentence is, whether it be by nature or nurture, the humanities has revealed itself as my calling. Oh, I am so dramatic. Yeah, I'm no longer like that when it comes to writing, or at least I hope I'm not so dramatic like this. I would I would probably have deleted this and put something else, or even left 
this final statement as is. And also that first, probably up until here. I'm so abstract in general. But, you know, I think, I think I am being too harsh on a 17-year-old. For those of you who are maybe applying, I would say you do you, but try be specific. If you've got a story to tell, if you've got something personal, I think that holds much more weight than just saying these phrases like I did. But I think to hear someone, to hear a young, a young aspiring student, I guess, profess such bold statements kind of shows their... I don't know, their ambition, their um, willingness to fake it till you make it. <laughs> and I think that's what got me through. I'd probably let myself in into the university, but I, because I think I see potential here. So if you're wanting to show potential, then I suppose looking to something like this as a, as sort of some sort of example is good. I would not give it though an, an A plus in terms of just a nice piece of writing because it's fluffy. But if you're looking at it as a personal statement and a reflection of who you are, I guess seeing all these little bits that now I'm not anymore or that I don't really use in my writing, all the dramatic little bits, reaping English of all its benefits, I can look at it with admiration, I suppose. <laughs> well, I hope you got something out of this to see this. I think what I would like to hear next is your questions. I of course don't remember exactly what advice I was given to write this personal statement but I do know what sounds good. I would say you just have to be authentic and you have to use what what you've got so I, I definitely did use what I've got and if you've got the same struggle such as me as um, applying to many different degree subjects you may find yourself in a situation where you'd ha you'll have to be a little bit fluffy and airy and fairy because that's the only way to get at what truly drives you and it seems like what truly drove me was understanding people and an understanding communication which still does drive me but i probably would have art would articulate it in a different way now